Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We are picking it back up today with Revelation chapter 13. 13. It's like unlucky number 13 <laughs> and we're actually reading about I wonder if that's coincidental. It's probably not, maybe, I don't know. I, ever, I don't think so, okay. really. <laughs> it, it might be, I don't know. Have, have you ever Have you ever been, I've had this happen before with Cherry and I, if you'll go to like a hotel and you get in the elevator and there's no 13th floor. Yeah. You ever seen that? The unlucky number. Yeah, it's, it's superstitious. Well, if so. it, fits, it fits here really well today. Yes, okay, so today <laughs> we are covering the beast the mark of the beast, that 666 number uh -huh. and a false prophet. So uh, interesting stuff to go over today. It's going <laughs> to yeah, be fun. Really interesting. So, all right. But to, to kind of give us some perspective on where we were at, we are now in the middle of the fourth literary section of the book of Revelation. Right in the heart so, of it. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's made up of chapters 12 through 14 today, obviously being 13. Uh, but this is really continuing on with kind of that great battle between Satan and Jesus. Obviously, mm -hmm. Jesus being the victor of that, as we know. It's really some interesting <laughs> stuff to go over today. I, so I'll be honest, like when I was a kid, this was the part of the Bible, this chapter right here, that terrified me. Because mm -hmm. I remember thinking, I mean, I, I was told by people in church, you're going to have to get a number. It's going to be 666 right here. I had When I got my iPhone watch, what, what do they call this? The Apple watch. I remember people being like, you can check out using this. Maybe that's the mark of the beast. I was like, I don't think so. But, you know, it goes on your wrist. But I, I, I remember thinking distinctly when I was a kid, I, I asked somebody, I said, well, if they can't put that 666 number on your hand, where would they put it? He goes, if, if you don't have hands, they'll put it in your forehead. And I remember... <laughs> Bless my little heart. I remember thinking like, wow, when you check out at Walmart, because my mom used to swipe her credit card, you know, mm -hmm. I thought like somebody, if they don't have hands, is going to have to go bloop. And <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's where this is going yeah. today. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, so these are some of my thoughts growing up. <laughs> I'm learning as we go along. But anyway, so that's uh, that's it. a little bit of the introduction of what we're going to go over today. <laughs> this is good. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my lovely mother-in-law, Bev, who's going to obviously be with us for this chapter. Thank goodness that it's not just me alone. Um, all right, Bev, so what are we looking at today? A uh, bunch of seemingly scary stuff, but again, it's focused on that battle between Satan and Jesus. You know, Friday we looked at the dragon. Mm -hmm. Right. And what he was trying to do here on earth. Right. Dragon obviously symbolizing Satan. Satan. They right. made that very clear. It was a big conflict between Jesus and Satan that we talked about on Friday. Right. But now in chapter 13, we're going to look at what that dragon, who is Satan, mm -hmm. what he does to turn the world against Jesus. Hmm. Okay. So it's going to be about his, his strategies. Yes. And yes. what he does. So opening up, we see that the dragon stood on the sand of the sea. Mm -hmm. And to find out about the sea, we need to go back again to the Old Testament, to okay. Genesis. Okay. All right. So We're used to doing that at this point. <laughs> so the beginning at creation, remember, over the whole... Uh, darkness covered the whole world and there was water. Yes. All over the whole uh, planet. Right, right. And basically, on the second day of creation, God divided the waters. Remember, we talked about right, that. Right, right. And the expanse between he called the sky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the third day, God gathers up the waters, it says. Mm -hmm. And he called that the sea. Okay. And the dry ground he called the earth. Right. So, what he's calling the sea is the waters down here that are gathered up, mm -hmm. you might say. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, too, when we think about the trumpets we just talked about. Mm -hmm. When Adam sinned, on that second trumpet, we see a blazing mountain thrown into the sea. The sea, yeah. right. And it turns to blood. Mm -hmm. And then on the third trumpet, we see that star falling from the sky, from yeah. the expanse, yep. and it lands it hits the the rivers and all that, and turns the, them bitter. The springs that yes. flow into the sea, turns right. them bitter, that's okay. right, wormwood. And so that bitterness causes death, and that's what causes death in the sea. Hmm. It was that star falling, which is the dragon, as we know. Right. Satan, it's right. all one. Okay. He's the one that caused death and bitterness mm -hmm. of anything mm -hmm. that's drunk down here. Mm -hmm. And so we see that the dragon made the sea bitter and death. In right, there. right, yeah. So we're going to see a beast that comes out of the sea, and it's okay. not the dragon. Okay, so a separate this is, kind of creature that we're looking at This here. is a separate creature. Okay. It's not the dragon. Okay. It's the beast. Okay. So the, the, the dragon, again, being Satan, the right. beast now meaning something else. Right. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay. All right. So basically, this beast comes out of the sea, mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to tell you right what it is. Okay. It is the kingdom of the world. Hmm. Every time you see this word beast in here, it's the kingdom of the world, which is Satan's kingdom. Hmm. In comparison to the kingdom of heaven, which is Jesus' kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Two kingdoms. There's only two kingdoms in right. this book. Right, right. In that respect. Okay. I mean, it's about, the conflict here has to do with those two kingdoms. Right, because again, we're focusing in this section really on the fight between Jesus and Satan. They're those two kingdoms. Yes. Okay. It's the fourth section of the book. It's right in the heart of Revelation, and it has to do with things on this earth and how it's all carried out down here. Gotcha. Okay, okay. So... Why don't you start in read, reading for us in Revelation 1 through 3, 13, okay. 1 to 3. All right, so right in the beginning of the chapter. Right. Okay. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Hmm. There's a lot happening there. A lot happening. Okay. And we need to go back to the Old Testament to okay. understand this. All right. <laughs> now, is that a surprise? Man? No. Not at this <laughs> of course, point. you're expecting that. Okay. Let's look first, though, before we go back to the Old Testament, I want to notice a couple things. How this beast looks quite a bit like the dragon. Okay. The dragon and this beast. Yeah, there were some similarities. Some I picked strong up there. resemblance. Both really ugly, it sounds <laughs> ugly like. Ugly and terrible. Okay. They both have ten horns. Mm -hmm. And we know that those horns are their power. Their and ten being the number of the test, trials, and tribulation. Right. They both have seven heads. Mm -hmm. But this one has blasphemous names on it. Everything's against God. Yeah, yeah. In, in this one. Of course, the devil is too. Right. But there's something different about the crowns. They're both crowns of rulership. The dragon wears crowns of rulership. The beast wears crowns of rulership. Mm -hmm. It's not victory. They yes. just rule. Right, okay? right. And basically, the dragon has seven crowns on his head. His heads have crowns on his heads. Okay. So he's the mastermind. Okay, okay. That would make sense. But the beast, the kingdom of the world, has ten crowns on his horns. Ten, hmm. on his ten horns. Okay. Horns being the power, the strength. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of the world carries out the plan that the devil has the mastermind of. Interesting. So that's so it's almost is. it's almost like kind of a puppet and a puppeteer almost. Exactly. The one behind it is the dragon wow satan wow but the one that carries it out is the kingdom of the world fascinating huh so this is what we're going into okay so now's the time we need to go back to that old testament and look at the four beasts in daniel when we go back to daniel 7 if you want to look there you can but mm -hmm. that's where it is daniel's having a dream mm -hmm. or a vision in the middle of the night okay and basically there's four winds of heaven mm -hmm. so we know this has to do those four With the winds earth. on the earth okay yep. all right yes that's right and it's Turning up the great sea. Hmm. That's okay. the sea we just Similar talked about. Similar to what we're seeing. It's okay. The sea, same okay. sea. And four beasts come out of the sea. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. Now let me just tell you briefly what the four beasts were. The first okay. one was a lion, and that was Babylon. Okay. The second was a bear, and that's Medo-Persia. Okay. The third one was a leopard, and hmm. that was Greece. Mm-hmm. And the fourth one was a terrifying and frightening and very powerful and doesn't name that one. Weird. Huh. You see, but, it, but again, all those specific animals mentioned right here. Right here. Wow. So they're wow. really tied together and yes. it ties together exactly with this book here. Wow. Now, it's interesting that in the Bible it tells you Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. It mm -hmm. names those nations by name. And this was during the time of Babylon, before Medo-Persia took over the world and before Greece happened. Wow. God prophesied it with Daniel and named them by name. Good grief. Isn't that amazing? Wow, yes it is. He knew that these three kingdoms would be, uh, would influence the whole, they, God knew that these three kingdoms would influence the course of human history to the end of time. Wow. Hmm. So basically, let's look at this. It says that the dragon gives the beast his power, his throne, and great authority. Right. And each one of these 
three kingdoms are going to be one of those three things, do one of those three things. Hmm. I'll show you how it all ties together, Ben. Okay, all right. So that fourth beast is this beast that we're talking about right now. Okay, that, that fourth beast that Daniel mentions that he couldn't really describe, but it was just horrifying. Yeah. That's really what this beast is that we're reading about in Revelation. Exactly. The dragon gives the beast the power, his throne, and his great authority. Right. And each of those other three kingdoms are going to be specific to those three functions that the dragon gives to this beast, which is the kingdom of the world. Okay, interesting. Okay? All right. I'm going to tie those beasts from Daniel and what Daniel said about them mm -hmm. to what Revelation says. Okay. So we're going to do kind of an interesting comparison here. Okay, okay. What he says in, in Revelation 13 about them, but I'm going to start with what Daniel says. Okay. I'm going to talk about the fourth beast first because that is this beast. And so that fourth beast that Daniel couldn't really describe. That's, yeah, it's talked about the most, actually. Okay, but it was hideous, whatever it was that yes, he was seeing, but it, that's this beast here in Revelation. Exactly. Wow, okay. That is okay. this beast, the king of the Which makes sense why he couldn't describe it like a normal-looking animal. There was nothing to yes. really necessarily compare it to. Exactly. Wow, okay, okay, <clears throat> makes sense. But he basically summarized it that this fourth beast was terrifying and frightening and very powerful. This was Daniel's vision. Daniel's that we're looking vision. At here. Okay. And he said it's different from the other three. The leopard, lion, and bear. Exactly. Okay. This beast was over the entire world and it was awful. Hmm. It had iron teeth and bronze claws mm -hmm. and it devoured its victims. And that is this beast. And so he goes backwards, kind of. He's starting with that fourth beast here in uh -huh. Revelation. Yeah. So back to Revelation. We're going to go in the order that they're mentioned here, which okay. is the fourth one that comes out. Now yeah. we're going to go to the third one. Okay. The right. third one, back in Daniel, was the leopard. Mm -hmm. And that was Greece. Now what, what was said about it in Daniel was that he had four heads and four wings, and he had authority to rule. Hmm. And those four heads and four wings, well, four heads is he thinks like the world. He is the world, world think tank, you might say. Okay. And he has four wings. It goes everywhere in the world, this thought. Now, when you think about Greece, and he has authority to rule. There's the authority here. Mm -hmm. So think about Greece. Mm -hmm. Those Grecian philosophers... Right. They were the think tank. They really are. And yeah. even to this day, oh, yeah. their mind affects how we think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of, when you think philosophy, it and comes things from like Greece. that. Right, right. It's a worldly way of thinking about things. Interesting. When we think of Greece, the other thing we think about is they started the Olympics. Right, right. They were so into the body. Hmm. Let's have a good body. I mean, let's see and compete and see how strong we are against each other. Yeah, yeah. So the mind and the body were their big things. Hmm. And it's that's it, actually very true when you think about yeah. it for that for that culture and that time. That's really yeah. interesting. Okay. And it, and it went to the whole world. This mm -hmm. thought yeah. that way. It's gone everywhere. Right. Those four wings going everywhere. Wow. Okay. And so the, it's interesting because in, in Daniel it said he was given authority to rule. Coming back to Revelation now. Okay. In Revelation it says that the big beast we're talking about here, the kingdom that of the fourth world. fourth beast. Okay. The kingdom yeah. of the world resembles and looks like the leopard, which is Greece. Yes. And the dragon gives the great authority to this look. Yeah, it says it was like a leopard. So there's yeah. there's yeah. similarities between... Yeah. Okay, I see what and you're he, saying. The great authority of the dragon goes into the mind and the body. Hmm, interesting. The way Greece operated in the world. Wow. So the beast in Revelation exercises his authority for 42 months. Okay. Sound familiar? That three and a half year period? Okay. It was the same period that the time the nations trample on the holy city. Okay. Anytime it refers to the kingdoms of this world, it's 42 months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. But this is, this is still specifically dealing, even though it's that fourth beast from Revelation, it's kind of through the lens, so to speak, of that leopard creature through right. Greece. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And it's trampling on the things of God. Hmm. So Dream. almost Satan using the mind and the body and philosophical things to kind of combat God is the way that this exactly. is happening right now. Okay, exactly. okay, got it. And that's happening for this period of time from the cross to the coming of the Lord. Okay, interesting. Okay, 
Moving on. Okay. The next beast that's mentioned there. We, feet like a bear. Is feet, that the next one? Yeah. Okay. That feet like a bear. Mm hmm And that bear was Medo Persia. Okay. So let's go back and look in Daniel now again, and okay. we'll see what it said about me. Kind of jumping back and forth, but I, I like forth. it. It's it's connected because we're connecting the dots from there to this beast because yes. the characteristics of Medo Persia then are going to be in this beast out of the sea. See, I see. Okay. And what it does is similar to what Medo Persia did. Now it's quite interesting about Medo Persia. It was a bear that had a higher side and a lower side. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of it's lopsided. It's an awkward bear, a lopsided bear. <laughs> and it's kind of like there was a division in it. There was the Medes and there was the Persians, and okay. one was stronger than the other. Okay, I got it. It was a little bit it. of a divided kingdom, you might say. That's why say. when you go to the gym, you work out both sides, people. Don't just do the one. <laughs> Don't just do the one. I love it. And basically, this one also had in his mouth, in his teeth, three ribs. This bear that this Daniel bear. was seeing. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, and the interesting thing about it, ribs... He's eating something. Three being life, but he's destroying life. Oh, wow. In his teeth. Hmm. So in Daniel, this, this bear is told to rise up and eat your fill of flesh. Hmm. Well, okay. that's kind of interesting because when you think about two sides and divided and my rights against your rights, and yeah. mine are more important than yours, Yes. that yes. division causes bloodshed. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. You see how that mm -hmm. happens? Mm -hmm. And that's why this kind of man against man that's a typical look at what happens in the kingdom of darkness in the hmm. kingdom of the world hmm. and we see that happening today we just see turning it. on each other even exactly wow. you've got part of my land i'm going after you yeah you don't yeah. believe like i do so i'm going to kill you right right uh, i have rights above you so yeah. respect my rights i won't necessarily have to respect yours but right, you know right, right. i have my rights you have your rights it's all about me kind of an attitude exactly hmm. and that's exactly what this bear represents okay and it's a killing it's hate and kill is hmm. what it is divide and conquer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're going to hate each other you can come right in wow so basically it's interesting now coming back to revelation okay hopping back again yeah we're now looking at the beast out of the sea, the kingdom of this world. Okay. And basically, this kingdom has of the world has feet like the bear. Right, right, okay. So that's how it tramples on everybody. It's how it, oh, it's interesting. the foundation of it is brother against brother, just like Ishmael, every yeah. brother is going to be against each other. Yes. That kingdom of the world is your own rights, my rights wow, against yours. Wow, wow. And that's, that's what it's founded upon. That's kind of how it moves. It's, wow. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. That's why it's the feet of hmm. the bear. Now, it's interesting that the dragon gave its power to this beast. In Revelation 13, it says that this beast, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of this world, would war against the saints. Huh. My rights against your rights. Wow. And their biggest wow. one they're warring against is the saints. In the New Testament, when it talks about God's people, it calls them saints. Everybody that receives Jesus Christ, it calls them saints. Wow. And do you know what saints mean? So there's St. Paul and there's St. Ben and St. <laughs> Bev. All right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. <laughs> it's not, you know what it means? Holy. Okay. You know why? Because you're born of incorruptible seed. You're yes. born of God himself and he's right. holy. So right. So he fit you holy. Wow. <laughs> so Amazing. isn't that cool? Yes. So I just want you to notice when it says saints, that's who it means. I okay. want you to be sure you know. I'm going by that from now on. <laughs> Nobody addressed me as Ben Pierce anymore. <laughs> So. I love it. I love All right, it. go ahead, go ahead. And he wars against the saints and he conquers them. Mm, okay. So it's kind of like those witnesses. Okay. You know, the two witnesses, they're going to destroy it. I'm going to Yeah. I'm going to knock you out anyway. Right, cuz the the witnesses were there for a while, but then they are killed. Because yeah. rejection, yes. Mm -hmm. They killed, rejected. Hmm. Forget you guys. And then literally, there are some saints being killed right now. Oh yeah. It just really fits. It's so interesting how this whole thing fits with what we're seeing right now, this year, right in this in the world today. Yeah. This is how the kingdom of the world operates. It's Absolutely. right here in Revelation 13. Absolutely. Okay, so we've now looked at the leopard and how kind of that ties into the beast, that it looks like a leopard, has the feet of a bear, but then the last mention was that his mouth is like the mouth of a lion. So back to Daniel about the lion. It's the first one was lion, the lion, remember? The first beast the first that beast Daniel, Daniel sees, mm -hmm. okay. And it's Babylon. Mm -hmm. And basically, whenever you look at it, it had wings, it was supposed to fly like eagles, but the wings were ripped off. Mm. And it represents mankind. 
okay. because they were supposed to be sons and daughters of God. Like the Son of God had wings on him. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be like him, as sons and daughters of God, but mm -hmm. they're ripped off because hmm. Adam sinned. Yeah. And yeah. now we're sons. So much more limited. Like we were supposed to be so much more. But... We were supposed to be sons of God, mm -hmm. sons and mm -hmm. daughters of God. That's how yeah. Adam was created to be. Right. But when he sinned, no longer a son of God. He becomes the son of the murderer, basically mm -hmm. the kingdom of this earth. Right. And he became what we call in the Bible a sinner, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. evil inside. And that heart of evil, that's what this represents. He has the heart of man, which is mankind, fallen mm. mankind. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting that King Nebuchadnezzar kind of brings this out. Okay. So one night, King Nebuchadnezzar was out on his palace porch, mm -hmm. looking out over his whole kingdom and thinking, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Babylon, I'm ruling the world. And he says, is not this the great Babylon I have built? Mm -hmm. By my mighty power and for the glory mm -hmm. of my majesty. Mm -hmm. And immediately, God struck him down mm -hmm. and made him be like a a beast of the field. He had to go out and live in the beast of the field. His hair grew long. He had cloth. I remember he Go basically went mentally insane. He went insane. Yeah. And it was like seven years before when he finally lifted his eyes up to God and acknowledged that God is the king of the universe. Wow. That's when his reason was restored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, this that's what the heart of fallen man is. is they're thinking, I do all this. So back to the book of Revelation. Mm hmm when we see the lion, it's the mouth of the lion that the kingdom of the world, this beast out of the sea, has. That right. mouth. Right. And the dragon gives that lion the throne. Okay. In other words, Babylon reigns, mm -hmm. in a sense, just mm -hmm. like King Nebuchadnezzar with his attitude of, hmm. I built Nobody's all this. Nobody's like me. Yeah, this exactly. is all by my hand. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Wow. So he gives, the dragons behind that, he gives him the throne. So the beast, the, king, the beast out of the sea, this kingdom of the world, what we see him doing is uttering proud words and blasphemies. Hmm. That mouth. Yeah, yeah. He blasphemes God and slanders God's name and his dwelling place, okay. heaven itself. That's the mouth of this kingdom. Okay, okay. So we've just completed looking at the this beast out of the sea. Right. This really nasty this, thing. <laughs> so there you got the picture of how he operates right, down right. here. No, it's really interesting though seeing seeing world. the kingdoms and how they line up and why the certain description of like the mouth, the feet, all of that makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And in, and to finish up that beast, I would like to finish I would like to read out of um, verses 8 and 9 right okay. out of Revelation 13. Yeah. Okay, it so says, verses 8 and 9? Uh-huh. Okay. It says, All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. So we see that the whole world's worshiping the kingdom of the world, mm -hmm. except those who worship God alone. He who has an ear, let him hear. That's the Holy Spirit calling to the world to listen up to the warning messages that have been given by the two witnesses. Okay. So saints, be patient and be faithful to Jesus. Okay, so that's really the description of a beast from the sea. But now we're looking at a second one, which is the beast from the earth. So this is, again, kind of an introduction of a new creature here that we're looking exactly. at. Exactly. Okay. So when we talk about earth, we go back to creation again. Mm -hmm. And we saw that God on the third day... Uh, had the land, dry land appear. Mm -hmm, right. And that, that he called earth. Mm -hmm. So that came out of the sea, and Adam was made of the dust of the ground. Remember that? Right, yep. So the beast out of the earth is, is that, out of the cursed ground, you might say that earth that's cursed. Mm -hmm. He's coming out of there. It has okay. to do with the people in the earth. Okay, okay. And later on in the book of Revelation, he's called the false prophet. Hmm, okay. So in, so the beast is the beast, which is the kingdom of the world, and mm -hmm. the false prophet is this one. Okay, okay. So we're going to refer to him as the false prophet when we talk about him, because that's the name given to him later. Okay, in the book of Revelation. so dragon being Satan, the beast of the sea, and then the beast of the earth would be called the false prophet. Exactly. Okay. So this is the false prophet talked about in Revelation. Okay. And compare that to the two witnesses. Remember it took two to establish something? Those yes. two testified of Jesus who is the truth. Right, right. Now you have one 
person, one prophet. Oh, interesting. Hmm. And so one person can so say... So the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. But here there's only one, one. witness or one prophet, one guy that's one like... One guy. Uh -huh. And he's false. Because huh. if you just have one person saying it's their perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. interesting. He is a liar, basically. Hmm. He's a one witness and he lies just like Satan who... His native language, he right. is a he's liar. He's the father of all lies. And yep. his native language, when he lies, he speaks his native language. Right, right, <laughs> so right. It, it really ties in. So this false prophet. Okay, so we've noticed some interesting things about him. Okay. He has two horns like a lamb. Mm hmm But he spoke like a dragon. Hmm. He, he looks like an innocent lamb. Mm hmm but at the same time, he's speaking like the dragon. Mm -hmm. so, kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. He's trying to look like the lamb himself. Yeah, he's yeah. He's really talking like the dragon. Hmm. Now, uh, the two horns are his power. Remember, okay. horns are power. Mm -hmm. To understand the two horns, we have to go back again to the Old Testament. Okay. Now, these two horns, they are mentioned here. We're not reading every single passage, right. but again, it's it's going along with the description of this beast from the earth, the false prophet. Yes, if you read okay. in Revelation 13. Okay. To understand those two horns, we need to go back to Genesis. Okay. And remember that Adam was created. God created him out of the dust of the ground. Right. That was his body. Mm -hmm. Where he sees, hears, tastes, smells, touch. Everything. All five senses. All those five senses. Right. And he had a soul, mm -hmm. which was his mind. Yeah. Your will, your emotions, all, all that. that. Yeah. But what brought him alive was that God breathed into him the spirit of life. Right. Right. So he had three parts. In a sense. Yeah, yeah. His spirit was his essence of who he was, and that mm -hmm. was what gave him life. Mm -hmm. But remember, when he sinned, what was left? Right. His, his intellect, kind of that soul and body, really. That yeah, intellect, mind, emotions, and your physical body was obviously still those there. Those two things. But his spirit died. He started functioning. Exactly. He started functioning like Eve did. Mm -hmm. This tastes good. This feels good. This looks, seems right. Yeah, yeah. And the, the devil had already been telling her a lie and said, you're going to be just like God. Mm. Well, you're going to be God, in other words. Right. You're, going to, you're going to determine what's good and evil, what you think is right. Mm. And she says, oh, this is good to eat. Mm, yeah, it tastes yeah. great. Yeah. So wow. she's functioning. So sinners basically fun function out of those two realms. They don't have the spirit to listen to him. Yeah, that makes sense. So now, once Adam had sinned, he basically functioned out of the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. And think about that authority that the dragon gives, that great authority that the dragon gives to the kingdom of the world. Mm -hmm. It was that Grecian authority. Mm -hmm. And remember what they were made up of. The philosophy, the mind. Oh, and the body. And the body. Interesting. Those two things. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the spirit of, of God. Right. Really right. influencing and making any decisions in this whole yeah. process. Or even influencing their philosophies. Right. So those two horns are have to do with change, your mind, what you think. Mm -hmm. And number two, your body, what feels good. Mm -hmm. Those are the two powers of this lamb that looks like looks like a lamb, but he's not really. He's a dragon. Interesting. He plays into what you think and what you do. Hmm. What, your body what you is. think and what you feel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Exactly. Wow. There's another interesting point about the false prophet in Revelation 13. It says okay. he's going to set up an image to the beast. An image to the almost like a like an idol or something of honor to the beast. To the beast. Okay. And that comes kind of right straight out of the Old Testament again. Okay. So King Nebuchadnezzar, in his dream, saw a man. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't figure out what was going on with this. Okay. And so he called in Daniel, and Daniel interpreted it. First of all, he had a head of gold. Mm -hmm. And Daniel said, you're that head of gold. It was Babylon. Okay, okay. Secondly, he had a chest and arms of silver. Okay. And Daniel said, that's Medo-Persia. Mm -hmm. The next one in line. Okay, next kingdom kind of after next his kingdom. to rule and reign. Okay. Equivalent to the, the head being the lion, mm -hmm. this being the bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the, then the thighs and the belly mm -hmm. were made of brass. Okay. So essentially that's Greece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we got them all. Okay. And then the last kingdom had, had legs like iron mm -hmm. and the feet like part of iron and part of clay. Okay. That's so the, the feet just slightly different then? That's the foundation of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, if you mix iron and clay together, it's not too stable. stable. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the legs go down into the feet, and basically those legs of iron and the feet part of iron and part of clay represent 
this king, this fourth kingdom, mm. the kingdom of the world. Okay, okay. It's the foundation of the whole thing. Hmm, interesting. So he has this dream, and the last part of the dream is this. A stone was cut out without human hands. It strikes this image. And this image of this man that he has. Yes. Okay. This, of these kingdoms, and it shatters it, and the wind blows it away, and there's not a piece left. That stone, that God, God's stone, becomes this huge mountain, which is God's kingdom, the kingdom of wow, heaven, wow. which will never be destroyed. Right, which is what we're reading about still here yeah. in Revelation. So it's just Interesting. Really cool. Now, okay, so I would imagine, obviously, Nebuchadnezzar, he wasn't known for being like the most humble. Christ, yeah, <laughs> most Christ focused king or humble, yeah, whatever you would want to call it. Uh, none of those things. So, from what I remember, he doesn't take too kindly to that dream from no. Daniel. Even though Daniel interprets it, mm -hmm. he's still not happy about it, kind of with him just being that head. He yes. wants the whole thing, right? Exactly. Okay. He had this idol made, this image made that was gold from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. He says Babylon's going to last kinda, forever. <laughs> he basically made this image that he saw in his dream, but instead of just making the head gold, he made the whole thing. Basically, just kind of defying the dream, saying, I'll do what I want, kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so he had this huge dedication to this image. Hmm. And he had musicians there and all the royal people and all right. the leaders. And everybody came and he said, everybody's going to have to bow down to this mm -hmm. and worship this. Mm -hmm. When the musicians start to play, everybody bow down. And mm -hmm. you remember the story of the three Hebrews who would not bow right. and got thrown into the fiery furnace. And right, they right, thought right. it would be the end of them. Well, that's what it's alluding to here when it talks about this false prophet setting up an image to that beast. Interesting. The kingdom of the wow. world. Wow, it's reflected all the way back there. Huh. In other words, this kingdom of the world, they want it to last forever, but it's already been predicted it's not going to. Yes, so yes. This wow. is the good news for all of us. Wow. You know? So we see this image being made to the beast and, and the false prophets calling everybody to worship. Yeah. The beast through this image. Mm -hmm. So the final thing we're seeing right after that here mm -hmm. in Revelation is verses 16 to 18. So okay. if you could read that for yeah. us, Ben. Okay. Now, these are actually the last few passages, I believe, of the chapter. But okay, so 16 mm -hmm. through 18. To the end of the chapter. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. That's, again, what I was terrified about. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. His number is 666. Okay, there's the mark of the beast. That's what terrified me when I was a kid. That's all about Walmart, people. Oh my you can't gosh. shop without it. <laughs> no, it. so, but it, it is interesting because, I mean, that number really has been signified so much even throughout like media nowadays. I mean, everybody's aware of that number. It's a bad number. It's kind of like 13 or, you know, mm -hmm. anything else. 666, boy, if that number comes up, you're like, well, that's not good. So we know it, but it, but it is here clearly in the Bible. You don't want that one on your license plate. Right, right. <laughs> well, before we answer that question for sure what it is, okay. back to the Old Testament. Of course. Because there has an issue of worship involved here. And it has to do with Cain and Abel. Cain was the firstborn of Adam. And he, Adam and Eve's first Adam two is, sons. Yeah. Okay. Cain and Abel. And Cain was the firstborn. He brings stuff from the cursed ground, some vegetables. And, got, and Abel brings the firstborn out of the... Um, of, out of his flock of, of sheep, flock of right? Sheep. Okay. And God accepts the sacrifice, but mm -hmm. he doesn't accept Cain's worship. Mm -hmm. And Cain gets upset. God said, warns him, don't do anything rash. Just obey me. Yeah, yeah. But of course, he goes and kills Abel. And God comes to him and says, you're going to have to leave now. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to leave this land. You're going to be a restless wanderer. You're not going to have any rest. You're going to go out there. And Cain says, somebody's going to, you know, this. I'm going to be out there and somebody's going to come after me now and kill me. Right. And God said, I'm marking you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. There's that Cain mark. received a mark. Cain received a mark. Mm -hmm. I'm marking you because no one can make that final decision whether you die or not. Okay. So they can't kill you. Your decision is what you, kills you in the end. Mm -hmm. This is the same mark. Hmm. This is the mark that God makes that decision of judgment in the end. Hmm. Have they decided for him or not? Hmm. So the curse of man, of, of a sinner is that mark on Cain. Back to Revelation. You're going to be marked in your forehead or in your right hand. Yeah. You have Pretty two, specific. It can be either way. You can either make the decision that the worldly system's right mm -hmm. and decide that's where I'm going mm -hmm. in your mind. 
Mm -hmm. Or you can do it in your hand, in your oh, body. Oh, I see. Okay, coming back again kind of to that intellect and body, but excluding exactly. the spirit. Huh. Well, you can just be born like Cain, born a sinner, and just following on and thinking you can make it. Hmm. They say that no one can buy and sell unless they have that mark. Right. Well, the kingdom of the world is all based on buying and selling. Mm -hmm. God's kingdom is based on a free gift. Right. Wow. But you got to earn it in the kingdom of the world. Mm -hmm. you got to buy it or sell it. Mm -hmm. So those that are in the kingdom of the world, they buy and sell. Mm -hmm. And that's how they try to gain... Right, if I do enough good deeds, if I can just earn my way, if I can be a good enough person, God will accept me. Oh, but I, instead of, yeah. it's free. Exactly. Wow. Wow. And, it, and, and just so you won't miss it, it says, this calls for wisdom. It said, if anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it, it is man's number. Mm -hmm. That word means mankind. Mm -hmm. It is fallen mankind. It is Cain's way to come to worship God. Mm. Hmm. By what he does, right? Not by Jesus Christ, the firstborn. Wow, man. interesting. And that number is six, six, six. It should have been life, but it's three is the number of life. Yeah. But six, six, six falls short of life. Wow. So six, six, six is the number of fallen mankind, and it's not something that I can do to to somebody else. Yeah. It's something that's from the very beginning of creating. You know, clear back in Cain's day, yeah. people were marked. Wow. It's fascinating to make that connection, honestly, between the mark of the beast and then the mark that was put on Cain. And again, seeing you know the way that Cain reacted to what God told mm -hmm. him to do, being defiant, doing it his own way. It, it, it all makes sense now with what you read here. Exactly. And the first judgment we see, the, there's a judgment on the world in the Old Testament, you know. It's the flood. Mm -hmm. when the whole world was destroyed, mm -hmm. that only righteous Noah and his family went through in the ark, went yeah. through that judgment. They were the only ones that made it. God's yeah. family, you know, the godly people. Right, right. None of Cain's family Yeah, Cain's survived. descendant, his whole family line, it stopped right there. They all right perished there. right wow. there. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Almost an insight of what's to come. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Oh, so man. that's what that is. Goodness gracious. Wow. Okay, guys. Well, listen, man, that... It's long, but it is detailed and good. And boy, does it make sense when you go back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, it's, it's amazing how you're flipping back and forth between the last book and the first book. Mm -hmm. But it's like everything in between, it's all pointing to Jesus. Just incredible. All right, guys. Well, hey, well, listen, thank you as always for joining us. Um, chapter 13, man, I'm, I feel better after this one. Breathe a sigh of relief. I'm not going to have to, <laughs> you know, go shop at Walmart with my wrist unless it's my watch. All right. Well, okay. listen, thank Sounds you so good. much, Bev, thank again, you. for walking us through that. Um, thank you again for you guys being here. Yeah. Appreciate each and every one of you. Again, um, if you haven't watched some of the previous chapters and you're like, what in the world is going on and you're just now picking up, I encourage you to go back and keep watching because it's going to really make sense as each one of these chapters builds on each other um, and as we go back to the Old Testament. So fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, so fascinating. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Hey, listen, you all be good. We will see you back here Tuesday for chapter mm -hmm. 14.